Good morning and welcome to our webinar, The Creation of Goff in the Village. Of course, we're speaking about World Goff Village and the courses here. And I have as my guest this morning, Kathy Harbin. And Kathy is with the World Goff Foundation. She is director of Goff 2020. And Kathy, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Okay, thanks, Sherry. And uh, hello, everyone. And welcome to the story of the World Golf Village and the golf courses out here in the community. Uh, might not seem like a fit my my uh, current title with the director of Golf 2020, but I'll back up a few years. And uh, my role previously was a general manager of the Slammer and Squire and the King and the Bear. And I actually arrived on property here in June of 1997. So um, when I can't when I first arrived here, I I drove into the World Golf Village that hopefully you all see one day. The nice bridge that you drive over. When I drove over that, it was a big pipe with some dirt on the top of it, and, I, and that's how I entered into the World Golf Village for the very first time. So I had the very unique experience of uh, of seeing the, the the design and the construction of the Slammer and Squire and the King and the Bear, and um, see it really go from dirt to what it is today. Thank you, Kathy. And our other guest this morning is Rick Periani. He is the Vice President of Design and Development for Davidson Development and was very involved in the creation of both the courses. So Rick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I'm a landscape architect by profession. Uh, I've been working uh, around the country and uh, in some cases abroad um, for about the past 30 to 32 years, but I had the golden opportunity uh, along with Jim Davidson, Sherry, and Ed um, to get involved here at the World Golf Village from inception. Uh, from 1988, I've been working on the planning, site design, landscape architecture, theming uh, of the community aspects of World Golf Village. But, uh, and in that role, I had the real privilege to work uh, on both of the golf courses here at World Golf Village. The Slammer and the Squire in concert with uh, Bobby Weed, then senior course designer for the PGA Tour Golf Course um, Services um, uh, in out of Sawgrass, and uh, at the King and the Bear with Palmer Course Design and um, Nicholas Design. In the case of the King and the Bear, an interesting note is that uh, the, collab the three way collaboration between the master developer Davidson, Palmer Course Design, and um, Nicholas Design was that the three folks kind of collaborating on the balance between the real estate objectives and the golf course objectives were all uh, landscape architects by profession. Harrison Minshew was a senior course designer on behalf of Palmer Course Design and Bruce Borland was the senior course designer on behalf of Nicholas Design. Uh, and we all three worked in concert uh, to deliver uh, what you experience today at the King and the Bear. Thank you, Rick. And this morning we're going to do our presentation in three different phases, basically. Um, the first being to talk about the community and neighborhood with the golf course. Um, then specifically to talk about the Slammer and Squire course and the King and Bear course. And let me just tell you now that if you were to have any questions during the presentation, um, if you would just type them in on your screen, we'll be happy to get to the questions at the end of the presentation. So, um, Rick, would you like to start this morning and talk about the community and the neighborhood? Sure. I think what we would like to do is introduce uh, the quality and the uniqueness of golf at World Golf Village uh, through the concept of houses don't play golf, people do. And what we mean by that is uh, that um, the golf experience and the uh, enjoyment and the memory of that is balanced with the um, real estate, the homes, and the neighborhoods that uh, interface with the golf course and there's a great balance between both um, experiences. Uh, when you play the courses, you play in a very park-like uh, setting. When you entertain family and friends in your backyards on your lanai around your pool deck, you overlook 
a uh, distinctly um, natural environment, and the two are really in balance between what was preserved, what was built in terms of the golf environment, and what was built in terms of the residential environment. Um, houses don't play golf, people do. The other thing that that means is think back through the 70s and 80s when golf was oftentimes used as the hook. It was used purposefully to sell real estate. Um, and oftentimes in those business plans, um, the numbers were chased, meaning that um, it was very evident that um, frontage values reigned supreme, and if you had an 18-hole golf course, you really tried to maximize as many frontage opportunities that you could, and sometimes uh, it resulted in linear course layouts where single fairways were lined on both sides with houses, so that from the tee to the green experience playing the course, it was as if the houses were out there playing with you. Um, it's very different here at World Golf Village. Uh, both courses create a core-like um, traditional golf experience. They're both walkable and they're certainly um, uh, uh, balanced in terms of the landscape and the setting with what was built, whether those, w whether those built elements are houses or streets or sidewalks or uh, commercial elements. The, um, the other way in which that concept is delivered and manifested in what was built at World Golf Village is oftentimes those early schemes um, were very definite in terms of the boundary between the golf um, fairways and the neighborhoods and yards. And that boundary was evident in terms of how the landscape oftentimes was truncated and stopped, so you had crisp, clean lawns coming down to a lake edge, and then on the other side uh, of the lake was the was the golf landscape, and the two were very different. So you you could often perceive the ownership boundary just simply by the way in which the landscapes were um, were installed uh, between the golf and the in the in the homes. At the World Golf Village, we've, we've overlaid both realms with a common landscape palette, and we've worked hard to extend the landscape from the course into the yards, and in reverse, extend it from the yards into the golf. So um, again, whether you're playing golf or whether you're entertaining and living in, in your, at your home, you share a knit together through the landscape uh, uh, park-like setting. The other thing that we did, um, and it's most evident at Slammer and the Squire, is we worked hard to separate the vehicular traffic from the golf traffic. And we did that in different ways. We did it through the installation of bridges at the, at the Slammer and the Squire so that WGV Boulevard and all of its traffic, visitor traffic and coming into the core area, the Hall of Fame and the Convention Center and into the neighborhoods is totally separated from the golf cart passageways that flow beneath the road underneath the bridges. And at the King and the Bear, we did it just in terms of how we did the course routing so that um, you play 18 holes of golf at the King and the Bear and you only cross one driveway which services 18 single family homes. So um, that is also a distinguishing hallmark. Keep the cars quiet, keep them out of sight as much as possible, and reinforce the uh, golf experience. Kathy? In keeping with uh, the conversation Rick is sharing now about the unique experience, one of the things that, that we've done uh, in, in keeping the uh, fairways more defined is that uh, the intent really was to have each hole stand on its own merit and, and to have you stand on the tee of each of the different holes and have a unique experience. I was asked many times as a general manager, what's a signature hole, and I was asked it for the Slammer and Squire and the King and the Bear, and my answer was always the same. I always asked people to tell me what the signature hole was, 
after they played the round of golf, and, and it really turned out to be across the board as far as all 18 holes. At some point, someone thought that was the best hole on the golf course, and, and that really was, was the, the, certainly the design intent with the Slammer and Squire and the King and Bear, that we wanted each hole to stand on its own and have a unique experience as you look down the fairway. And uh, moving into the Slammer and Squire, we opened the golf course in May 16, 1998 was the official opening, and that is the same time that we opened uh, the village as a whole. We opened the World Golf Hall of Fame at the same time. We had a soft opening for the golf course a little bit uh, earlier than that, but that was really the official opening. And um, as uh, Rick mentioned earlier, Bobby Weed was the, was the golf course architect and designer. He had two player consultants, Sam Snead and Gene Sarazen, um, thus the name Slammer and Squire. And they really brought to the, to the design um, something that is a true reflection of the era in which they played. The era in which they played was, uh, it was a lot more of a ground game. Uh, as we move into the King and Bear, you see that uh, as the power was brought in by Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas to the game of golf, that it became a little bit more of an air game. But with the Slammer and Squire, that it really was, was a reflection of the old Donald Ross designs where it was... Um, a lot of collection areas around the greens, uh, generous fairways, but once you started getting closer to the green, you had to start getting a little more accurate, and if you missed the green, by chance you might fall into a collection area, and you had to start getting a little more creative with your shots. It wasn't just a, a common chip and run. You might have to do a bump and run. You might have to um, do a flop shot, and that's something that's really unique to the design of the Slammer and Squire, and a true reflection, again, of the era in which our uh, player consultants played and the intent was to to make it a golf experience where the novice golfer the person who was coming here for um, a resort stay could play and enjoy the golf course all the way up to a championship golf course where we did host two uh, champions tour events at the Slammer and Squire and the architects will tell you that that was really the design that was that they wanted it to be player friendly and a friendly, fun experience for players of any ability level. In addition to that, we we recognized, as did the architects and as did Davison Development as the uh, master plan developers, that we had something very unique in that it was in the shadow of the World Golf Hall of Fame, which is where all the great players of the game are honored. And so with that, you'll, you can see the World Golf Hall of Fame from 12 of the 18 holes and you play into the shadow of the Hall of Fame as you finish your round. And we wanted it to be an overall uh, unique experience for the golfers who came out there to feel that the special history tradition of the game and the unique experience that uh, that the golf course could, could bring. And, and as Rick was mentioning earlier, once you get onto the golf course, the first tee, you start going into a different area. You go into the wetlands and you go into um, um, the wooded areas you'll, you'll see around the Slammer and Squire. And it is really something that's unique about both of these designs that's not surrounded by houses and you truly feel like you are out there with the wilderness playing the golf course and it's overall a unique round of golf because of that. And you're not seeing many, many cars around the, the roads or the areas. And I'll, I'll turn it back over to Rick to give a little bit of an overview of um, the core area by the village. Thank you, Kathy. The core area of the Slammer and the Squire, uh, as you see depicted here in this picture, there are 10 of the 18 fairways of the Slammer and the Squire that are arrayed in um, a core configuration, like the old traditional golf course layouts that did not drive real estate. Um, that core area, um, basically when you play through those 10 holes, um, you are um, playing golf in respect to the masters. Those that are enshrined in the tower at the Hall of Fame, the greats of golf, kind of overlook you symbolically. And the tower acts as maypole um, and really kind of uh, illuminates the golf experience um, in the shadow of the Hall of Fame. 